grounds their kid, especially at my age. But anyway, I was grounded. Usually I just climb out of the condo window onto the fire escape, but tonight, I don't know, I feel sort of homey. Like, maybe I have a family. At home in my room, my walls are Lou Reed, Exine, Susie Sue, Kurt Cobain, David Bowie, Nico. Not the alive Nico, the dead Nico. The alive Nico is uber stupid cool. The dead one is real cool. Did you know Nico was fluent in four languages? That's not what you hear about her. Typical. Marlena told me that. I lie down on my bed. I look at my ceiling, hoping for a crack in the ceiling that means something like tea leaves. In my bedroom, I write letters on the walls, hidden underneath the wall of posters with a purple sharpie. Today I'm writing underneath Nico. What I write are dear Francis Bacon letters. Francis Bacon, the painter, you know him? The guy who painted the screaming, melting Pope dude? Possibly the coolest painter in ever? Why? It's the faces? He makes faces look like they can't hold still, which is pure reality. That's so right on. That Francis Bacon understood how faces really are. For instance, when you get up close to someone to suck face, their faces look like Francis Bacon paintings. Am I right? Yeah. Open your eyes next time. No lie. I still get that. A face that just might smear off or explode. Right? <laughs> Underneath Nico poster I write, Dear Francis Bacon, my face is your eye hole. Basically, I'm making a book out of the walls of my bedroom. Something for the spawners to decipher after I'm gone. Someday the spawners will walk across the purple shag carpet and start the process of taking their daughter's poster down for a remodel. My father wants a home office. My mother a fucking crafts room. That's when you'll find my words. I study my own handiwork. Then I pull out the new book Marlene gave me. Physiologia del Amore by Monagasa. I open the big red book. Yeah, so it's in Italian, but that's not the cool part. The cool part is just underneath every line, and I mean every single line, there's another line in pencil for every line of the book, translated by Marlena, who, like Nico, knows four languages, and him. Marlena's lines under all of Monagaza's lines. But the second coolest shit thing is the quote that opens the book. To the daughters of Eve, that they may teach men that love is not lechery, nor the simony of voluptuousness, but a joy that dwells in the highest and holiest regions of the terrestrial paradise, that they make it, make it the highest prize of virtue, the most glorious conquest of genius, the first force of human progress. Oh, God, my badge throbs. <laughs> I close the book and hold it on the top of my chest. Daughters of Eve? Fuck yeah, it's me. See, I don't think Eve was a twat that got tricked by a snake. I think Eve might have been a badass. I think she showed Adam what to do with his dick, and without her, he'd be sticking it in knot holes and bell butts and sucker fish. <laughs> without Eve, Adam's just a guy standing around with a dick in his hands. Daughters of Eve. <laughs> also a wicked band name, possibly. <laughs> I roll over and look at the ceiling. There's a crack in the plaster in the shape of Vag. Seriously, under the sign of Vag, I feel positively dreamy with my big red book. And I think, I think, I think of my love. Obsidian, 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 daughters of Eve. I sit up and get the purple sharpie and write Monagaza quotes on my bedroom wall frantically. Under Nico, I'm all hot, sweaty, itchy. Yep. Me, the jailed in daughter box, writing up a storm. But that's not all I'm doing in the daughter box. I'm listening for my famous family drama, Household Electricity. My dad looks a little like Daniel Day Lewis, so it's easy to picture him in some crappy historical drama acting all serious and righteous and crap. <laughs> <laughs> <Lincoln>. <laughs> My mom looks a little like Catherine Deneuve, if Catherine Deneuve was glassy-eyed from antidepressants and evening cocktails. I listen for them for hours. The only other thing I hear my father say late, late, late into the evening is, I've got late work to attend to. And my mother going in a voice, even I have to admit, is filled with beautifully tiny nails. Your work sure takes you from the house and ways you positively relish, doesn't it? 
Then the door slams, then I hear the sound of unscrewing. Vodka? Scotch? Provassier? What are we drowning in tonight, Mother? I really don't blame her. If I was stuck in some kind of psychotic housewife home in a condo with nothing but rich people objects to clean while a philandering husband made escape for his nightly escapades, I'd medicate the shit out of myself, too. <laughs> Jim Morrison's favorite blues. Live it up, mother. Into this house we're born, into this world we're thrown. She looks, she looks melty. She looks like a Francis Bacon figure. She wasn't always a melted mother face. She used to be wicked smart, read all kind of books, and she was a concert pianist. When they got with each other, I mean, before me. Apparently that's why a baby grand lives with us in the condo, but I've never heard her play. When I was born, she had some kind of weird mother breakdown, and then when I was 10, she ate an entire bottle of sleeping pills, and I remember watching my father slap her face trying to wake her up, and I remember how she looked playing on the hardwood floor, her body in a little S shape. And I remember going in the bathroom and eating toilet paper and crying because kids, kids, kids don't have language yet. After that, she just sort of became an expert at rubbing things clean. Silent, but spotless. When I was five, but Jesus Christ, were any of us ever five? Mm. No, I don't remember. But I'm five, and my mom and dad have me decked out in some kind of black velvety girl dress and black patent leather Mary Jane shoes. And my hair is long and blonde and captured in a beautiful black satin bow. And I have no idea what I look like to all adults around us, but I'm praying, praying to the moon I look this thing that I've heard of called pretty. We're at one of my mother's solo piano performances. My father and I sit on red velvet chairs, part of the audience. Everyone's eyes are on my mother. Everyone's heart is on my mother. Everyone's leaning toward her, her face, her body, her hands, waiting to be pleasured. Her back is straight and strong, her hair is wrapped and wrapped up and around in a great swirls of French twist. Her gown is off white silk and chiffon and off of her shoulders so that her shoulders look to me like perfect pearl drops. Everyone is holding their breath in anticipation, but no one is everyone more than I am. I'm hot underneath my black velvet and a little itchy and yep, a little bit I have to pee. But I'm also wanting, I could eat her. I want to run up that instant and crawl into her lap and fold my face between her jaw and collarbone and suck on her shoulder. When her hands lift, then lower onto the keys and the first note sound, I think I might die. If this is kid's suicide, I'm there. I cry. My father gently, so gently, puts his hand on my leg and whispers, shh, sweetheart, it's okay, it's okay. Like he's a real father. He puts his arm around me, he's right, it is, but five-year-olds can't contain all the pleasure and pride and happiness and desire and feeling in their minds or bodies. So now I'm not just crying, yeah, 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 I'm peeing, I'm peeing, just a little, not enough for any kind of scene or anything, just girl, kid, silent pee, but enough to relieve some of this mother-loving, God-forsaken pressure. She's beautiful, she's playing Franz, shoo. Bert, like Ernie and Bert, mm -hmm. Franz, Shoe, Bert, she's beautiful, she's beautiful, she's beautiful, she's beautiful, she's beautiful. When she's finished playing Franz, Shoe, Bert, I can't hold anything anymore. I leap out of my red velvet seat, which has the faintest trace of girl pee on it, and I squeeze through the aisle of pretty dressed up people clapping. And I run up to the stage and I crawl up onto her leg, knee, into her lap, and she's laughing and people are clapping and she's kissing me and holding me and a little bit I put my mouth on one of her shoulders, don't tell me one. And a little bit I'm a little bit sucking her shoulder, don't tell me one. And then we both stand up and she holds my hand and looks down at me smiling and signals me and miraculously we know what to do as if we're a mother and daughter. We bow together. I'm so not fine anymore. Thanks.